Madonna, Fendi and Madonna. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Chinema and I make boarding school, lifestyle, and vlog videos. Before I tell you guys my stats and everything that I did to get into college, I want to first let you guys know where I got in again, where I got waitlisted, and where I got denied. So I got into ASU Chapman DePaul Drexel, Florida State, Iowa, which is the University of Iowa. Ithaca College, Montclair State University, and Towson. I got waitlisted at Syracuse University and Loyola Marymount University, and I got denied at Boston University and the University of Southern California. I applied using the Common App at all of these schools except for at Towson because Towson is not on the Common App, and I applied as either Health Science slash Public Health or Film slash Screenwriting at all of these schools. I plan on doing both in college and it's most likely going to be a double major or a major and minor. So without further ado, we are going to get into this video. Okay guys, so we are going to start with my stats and we're going to start with my GPA in particular. Some people have weighted GPAs. My school, we don't do that. Not to my knowledge at least because not a lot of us take APs. My overall GPA is a 3.47. That is a B plus average. The breakdown from 9th through 11th grade is like this. 9th grade at a 3.42. Honestly, I had no clue what a GPA was. I took the most easiest classes my 9th grade year, but I just did not care. Sophomore year is when stuff went downhill. So I really was thinking about college sophomore year and that's why I wanted to challenge myself and I took two math courses. I got a 3.28. 3.28 GPA. Junior year, I completely redeemed myself and I got a 3.72 GPA. That's honestly like my best year of high school, like until senior year. So I was really proud of myself then. My current GPA right now for senior year is a 3.78. Around that, I would probably put it higher, but that's basically what it is. And like I said earlier, we do not have a weighted GPA at my school. On to classes, I did not take AP or honors classes until this year in my senior year. As I said, my school, we do not have that many AP courses. There's not that many AP teachers. And if you do wanna take an AP class, usually you can find it online, but the online school costs like $3,000 and not everybody has that. So I did not take APs or honors courses until this year. However, as I said before, I did take two maths in 10th grade. I took Algebra 2 and Geometry, and I got Bs, B minuses in both of them, so. I am taking AP Lang and AP US History this year, and I'm also taking Honors Spanish, which is Spanish 4 at my school. Next, we're going to go into test scores, and I think this is honestly what saved me at some institutions, not a lot, because as you know, class of 2021, we did not really have to worry about SAT scores that much. The August SAT, which I took August, I think 29, 2020, I got a 1270, and the breakdown was a 630 in English and a 640 in math. So I took it again in November in the midst of college application season, and I got a 680 on English and a 620 on math, which gave me a 13 100 composite score. My super score was a 1320 and that's somewhere in the 90th percentile of all test takers. My school, we do not rank. We have like 23 girls in our grade, I think. I, I can't even guess where I am in that, so we just don't rank. So the first thing that I put was student government. So I have been in SGA since 10th grade and I have served as class president for the class of 2021 since 10th grade. I talked about how I helped plan school events with my class and fundraisers. And as part of the student government, I hosted events for the school, such as book drives, blood drives, and a school dance, which is every year. The next activity that I put on my list was foreign exchange and i think that was probably something that was really impressive to some of the colleges that viewed my common app i went on an exchange trip in 2019 the end of my sophomore year i went for one month 
June to July and I went to South America. I loved it, loved it, loved it so much. I went to Chile. It was a really, really fun experience and I met a lot of friends that I'm still in touch with to this day. So the next activity I put was theater slash drama and I said that I've had a main or semi-main role in the play since ninth grade and I wrote a play this year for my school. Next, I put being a tour guide for my school and basically I've been doing that since 10th grade and I just give tours to prospective students and their families and at my school we also host a bunch of other events. I was also made a head tour guide alongside my friend Chloe. So there are two tour guides that head the whole program. We're basically the student I don't want to say ambassadors, but we work alongside the admissions team. The fifth activity that I put, or I just want to say like not activity, but I guess like extracurricular was peer leadership. As a peer leader, I serve as a resource and a model for younger students. And I also help plan events for the rest of the student body. Next, I just put debate slash speech as a student leader. I took a discourse class, a civil discourse class over the summer. And it was just something that was recommended to leaders. So I just put it on there. And lastly, I put work. I worked the summer after my ninth grade year in 2018. I also did not put my community service because if I did, they would laugh. I do not have a lot of hours. Um, I was supposed to get like most of my hours 11th grade, but COVID, literally COVID. So I didn't put that there. So next I'm going to talk about my honors. Well, as I said before, I go to a small school in the middle of nowhere and there's not that many opportunity for me to get national recognition or state recognition. So first, I got the George Washington Book Award in 11th grade, and that's basically from George Washington University in DC. I also put that I got an A Better Chance Award. A Better Chance is a program that helps minority students who come from lower income or middle income households get into prestigious or semi-prestigious or just regular boarding school. I also put that I was on merit roll and honor roll for my school. Most of my time here, there's only ever been like two or three trimesters that I haven't been on there. At my school, merit roll is having a 3.3 GPA or higher with no grade lower than a C and honor roll is having a 3.7 GPA or higher with no grade lower than an A. I've had honor roll consecutively since third trimester junior year and before that I had merit roll consecutively since third trimester sophomore year which is honestly amazing because most of sophomore year I kind of failed. We are next going to go on to my academic recognition awards. Those are also at just the school level. I got one for English for junior year, math for junior year, and then I got a history one since ninth grade. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna read my Common App essay and just some background on it. It took me a really long time to get it to click. So I wrote this in like October, 2020. First application deadline was November 1st, 2020. So we were struggling, but we finally got it and I'm very, very proud of it. The sound of my heavy breathing drowned out my thoughts as I ran in the wooded trail. I could barely think as I struggled up the steep hills, but one sentence played continuously in my head. Why am I here? I had not planned on playing a sport during the first trimester of my junior year. I had only wanted to be the manager for the cross country team, yet here I was running in the woods like a fool. As I stumbled out of the woods, I was embarrassed to see the other girls hanging out around the bus. Done with their mile run, no, done with their mile run long before I was. I was even more ashamed upon learning my mile time, a whopping 13 minutes and 56 seconds. How had I let myself get so out of shape? I expected to be immediately cut from the team and perhaps offered a spot as a manager, which I originally had hoped for, had hoped. Sorry, I can't read. But my coaches brought me to the side and asked me to join the team. Reluctantly agreeing, the fear of being the team disappointment lingered in the back of my mind. Our first meet would be in a few weeks. If I could barely make it through one mile, how on earth was I going to run a 5K? Our coaches made our team get to work right away. I absolutely hated running in the humid heat and clouds of gnats and mosquitoes. I complained throughout our practices and would start walking whenever I got tired of running. 
I was hoping to hit my plateau, a point where running no longer felt like a death sentence, but that day never came. It was a miracle that I was able to finish our first meet in 34 minutes. And although the Chick-fil-A for dinner after the meet was certainly appealing, I could not see myself continuing to run cross country. I wanted to quit the team, especially after increasing my 5K time by three minutes during the second meet. As I sat alone that evening, wallowing in self-pity, I thought about what made me so different from my teammates. How could they run with ease under 30 minutes while I struggled to breathe? As I watched my teammates chirp happily over their food, their lively expressions contrasting with my sulking face, I realized what differentiated us. My teammates may not have enjoyed running cross country, but they were motivated to better themselves with each meet. While I wanted to improve each meet as well, my actions didn't reflect that. I complained and walked during practices, yet still expected to somehow rank top 10 after each meet. It wasn't enough for me to wish to be better. I had to put in the effort to become better. It's a water break. After our team's first two meets, I began taking early morning runs around my small boarding school campus. As I took quick, calculated breaths, using the instrumentals from my upbeat music to pace myself, I replayed my coach's words in my head. Don't give up. It's all mental. There's nothing your body can't do. These words of encouragement were the fuel I needed in my tank. I replayed them during my next two meets, and by the end of the season, I was running a 28-minute 5K, shaving off six minutes from my original time. While this may not be a feat to some, it was a manifestation of the determined mindset I had adopted. When I look at the most improved player plaque sitting on my desk, it reminds me of the power of my dedication. Whenever I wanna give up on a homework problem or put off an important task, my coach's words of encouragement echo in my ears. Don't give up, it's all mental, there's nothing you can't do. Sorry if I read that really fast. Honestly, I'm not really the best at like reading in front of people, but that is my common app essay. I wrote it in like two weeks and I got it edited by like three people, but I'm very, very proud of it. And honestly, it just, it's such a motivator. Like reading that now just motivated me. I don't even know. Okay guys, so those are my stats and extracurriculars that got me into college. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We are almost at a thousand subscribers. I will see you guys in my next video next week. I try to post twice a week, so get ready for some more content. And I'm so excited because now that I'm getting into college and I finished my college application season, college content is coming this way. It's coming your way. So subscribe for more and I'll see you guys in my next video.